Hello, my name is David Data, and I'd like to offer you what I've been offered. First, I'd like to thank my many teachers and the intimate partners who've had a profound influence and offered me great gifts in my life. I've received an extraordinary amount of information, practices, and ways of loving, and it is with an open heart that I'd like to offer those gifts to you. I've worked for many years with people who were into spiritual practices, yoga, meditation, prayer, and what I found over the years was the part of them that was least enlightened, that is, the parts of them that were most endarkened, was their sexuality as well as their intimate life. For some reason, it seemed to be the last part of most people to be illuminated by the light of love or knowledge. And so I want to bring, to the best of my ability, light into the realm of love and sexuality, or enlightened sex. The first step of bringing that light into sexuality is to understand the difference between love, romantic infatuation, and sexual polarity. Most of us are a little confused. Sometimes we fall in love with someone, but we don't feel sexually attracted to them. Or sometimes we are sexually attracted to somebody, but we're not sure if we love them. Or sometimes we fall in love with somebody madly, only for that to wear off in a few months or maybe even a few years. And then we wonder, do I love them? Or was I just in love with them and that passed? So these three threads, love, romantic infatuation, and sexual polarity are very important to understand separately so then we can bring them together and have whole and enlightened or full of light relationships. First, we're going to look at love. The way I'm going to be using that word is oneness. Love is to become one with. So as you're sitting here or standing or in your car or in bed, or walking, or wherever you are listening to this, feel everything around you. To the extent that you feel separate from everything and everyone, that separateness is unlove. To the extent that you feel one with anyone or anything, that's love. So if you were an artist and you really wanted to paint some flowers that you saw in a vase. You wanted to capture the essence of those flowers you saw in a vase, not just technically capture their color and shape, but to actually somehow feel and put in painting their deep essence. You would need to love the flowers, that is, become one with the flowers. You would have to be willing to let down your guard, to feel the flowers completely, to, in a way, get inside the flowers and feel their essence, to know their essence, and then express that through your art. Love is that capacity to become one with. So if you're looking into an infant's eyes, sometimes an infant is so unguarded that you just become one with that infant's heart. There's no sense of separation. The infant is unguarded, you let down your guard, and there's a deep oneness, one heart of you and the infant. Or perhaps you could be in nature, skiing, walking in the woods, swimming in the ocean, and you let down your guard, and you become one with the water, or the snow, or the sky, or the trees. And that oneness is a form of love, loving nature. Spiritual practice involves learning to love more consistently. Again, love is opening and becoming one with, and unlove is closing and withdrawing. So the more tense your breath is, the more tense your body is, the more separate you feel from everyone and everything. So tension in the breath and body results in a feeling of separation and unlove, and then we seek love because we feel separate. In some exercises we'll be doing later, we'll be learning how to open our breath and to open our body, to open our emotions and mind, so that we could become more one with. That is love, to become one with. 